All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So I actually just posted a video earlier this morning uh, talking about the Jets' playoff chances, right, going through their schedule, AFC East outlook, all that kind of stuff. I'll leave it linked down below in the description box. But one other topic that I wanted to touch on is this whole Elijah Moore drama thing that's happening on Twitter. After the game, Rich Samini tweeted that one thing that was hard to understand was the fact that Elijah Moore had zero targets. And Elijah Moore tweeted him back, basically saying, if I say what I really want to say, I'll be the selfish guy. We're winning, grateful, huge blessing, all I ever wanted. Bittersweet for me, but I'll be solid, so I'll just stay quiet, just know I don't understand either. He follows it up with, I support all my teammates 100%, everyone rocking out needs to keep rocking out, that's part of why we're winning, don't get it confused either. So I think from a fan's perspective, to read that tweet directly after the game, I understand how it could be viewed negatively, uh, just from an optic perspective, whether you're a fan of the Jets or not. I mean, questions start to arise naturally after reading that first tweet. You know, will this be a problem moving forward? Does Elijah care more about stats than winning? I get all that. But I feel like if we take a sec and we put ourselves in Elijah Moore's shoes, we can understand that, hey, he's in his second year of his NFL career. I mean, we're not even at the halfway point of the NFL season. Uh, he's 22 years old, so not only is he just a young football player, but he's just a young guy overall. He's used to being one of the focal points of the offense. I mean, he was a second-round pick. A big reason why he was you know, a highly regarded second-round pick. Many thought that he should have been a first-round pick. I was one of those guys. Um... You know, I, I look at Elijah Moore's career back at Ole Miss. He racked up a ton of catches and yards and touchdowns. Ole Miss's offense was, you know, freaking electric with Lane Kiffin. So to go from that to now, right, where there's a lot of mouths to feed with guys like Brees Hall and Michael Carter, Braxton Berrios, Corey Davis, Garrett Wilson, the entire tight end position, there's, there's only one ball. You know, I, I feel like... Not every single week, the same guy is going to step up, and that's actually been a a trend here with the New York Jets. Last couple of weeks, it's been Brees Hall, but in the early parts of the season, Brees Hall was struggling with you know the fumble, the drop passes. When he wasn't racking up a ton of volume, it was guys like Garrett Wilson. You know, think back to that Browns game, the absolutely just. That was an absolutely incredible performance from Wilson in his second game of his NFL career. Caught the game-winning touchdown against Cleveland. It was absolutely insane. So from being a highly prolific college receiver to being a high NFL draft pick to getting a training camp and people saying, oh, he's the next Antonio Brown, he's going to light the NFL up, to seeing zero catches on Sunday, I could see, for a 22-year-old, by the way, I can see that there might be some frustration there. And I don't necessarily... I don't blame him for that. Uh, is it the best thing to tweet that out? Probably not. But you know what? He was mature enough to tweet out a second thing, kind of clarifying it, saying he supports the win. He supports the teammates, everything like that. In fact, my buddy uh, Ben actually had a really, really good point where he said it's week six. Let's revisit it later. The Jets will need everyone at some point. You know, that's the reality of being on a team with a lot of weapons. Not everybody can be Devontae Adams with Green Bay. Not every, you know, a year ago, not everybody can be Stefan Diggs in Buffalo, right? Where you are that good to where you are separating yourself from good wide receivers on your football team as well. Um, you look at teams like the Kansas City Chiefs. It's now a multitude of different guys getting involved throughout the years of the Pittsburgh Steelers with Claypool, Deontay Johnson, now George Pickens to that list. Uh, I mean, really, Pittsburgh has done a great, great job of getting production from numerous wide receivers in the same year. Juju Smith-Schuster. I mean, I mean, the list goes on and on with Pittsburgh. Uh, they just do a great, great job of adding wide receivers through the draft. But anyway... That's the reality. There's so many mouths to feed on this Jets offense, so many different guys to uh, uh, make plays, so much talent here. The offense isn't going to be funneled through one player week after week after week after week. That's just not the reality, right? I don't quite frankly think it's smart either to do that. I think the variations, the, uh, the unpredictability of the Jets offense, the Jets weapons, never really knowing who could be the main target of the, you know, of the offense that, that puts defensive coordinators on their heels a little bit. It puts head coaches on their heels, uh, defensive players as well. Who, you know, are they second guessing? Who do you have to watch out for? Who are you scheming against? Stuff like that. So I understand the, fr uh, the frustration from Elijah Moore. If this continues on, 
you know, if it's week 10 and Elijah Moore has seen five targets from now and, and then, yeah, it'll probably probably be a pretty big issue. Um, but that's not the case. You know, it's one game. I, I know Elijah Moore's stats haven't been all that great this season. He has 16 catches, no touchdowns, 203 receiving yards. Also has a couple drops on the season as well. Um, but look, I mean, we're six games through the NFL season. I'm not writing off Elijah Moore. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, he's a head case or he's a problem or anything like that. Um, you know, again, if it continues on week 13, week 14, yeah, it'll probably be an issue. But, you know, I, I'm not at that point. Uh, now, right? By no means. So anyway, let's enjoy the win. Jets beat the Green Bay Packers by two, by three possessions here, 27 to 10. Crazy, crazy stuff. Broncos next week. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And as always, go Jets.